Hi, welcome to Fostering Resilience. I'm Dr. KJ Foster, and in this video, I'm sharing with you one of my favorite group therapy exercises. It's actually a group therapy exercise that's a favorite among my clients as well. And it's a group therapy exercise that translates into any, any type of industry, like any type of space. So for example, I work in the addiction recovery field. And so that's what I use this this group therapy exercise for working with my clients. But like I said, this translates to, let's say you work with students and you want to have an icebreaker, something that really cre creates some connection between your students or connection within the group therapy space that you're working in. It really doesn't matter. It's something that is great no matter what population that you are working with. So with that said, let me just quickly introduce myself in case you're not familiar with my channel. And this is maybe your first uh, click on one of my videos. I create videos for individuals, families, and counselors to help facilitate positive change, especially for people who are recovering from addiction. But I think that there are a lot of my videos that help people to recover from virtually anything. So I'm all about helping you to develop strength and resilience to become the best version of yourself possible. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the group therapy exercise that I'm sharing with you today, which I call building connections. So how this works is you take the group that you're working with and you pair them up. So however you'd like to do that, the way that I choose to pair the individuals is I have them choose uh, I, I go by seniority. So whoever is the senior most member in the group, I encourage them to pick somebody that they don't know that well. So I encourage them, don't pick your roommate, don't pick your best friend, don't pick somebody that you know really well, but pick that person that maybe you don't know anything or a lot about. So another way that you could pair them up is you could have them call off numbers, right? One, two, three, you know, just go around, have them pick a number and then put the numbers in a, uh, a cup and have them pick out the numbers until they're, they're paired up appropriately. But that's a little more random and that they may get paired with somebody that they know really well, but it's however, however you want to pair them up, just pair them up and have them go and sit with their partner. Um, best case scenario is that they're sitting across from each other. They're facing each other. And then you let them know that this exercise has two main goals. And one goal is to accumulate as much information as you possibly can about your partner. So they're going to be interviewing each other. And so what I do is I have each of them choose, you know, somebody choose to be A and somebody choose to be B. And I joke, you know, a little bit about how this is, you know, one of the first challenges of the exercise is somebody has to be A and somebody has to be B. And then they're interviewing each other. And the first goal is you ask as many questions as you as you can within the allotted time frame to gather as much information as you can about that other person. And so the goal is to gather as much information as you can, goal number one. And then goal number two is as you're doing that, as you're asking your partner questions, you want to identify any similarities that you have with the goal of identifying at least three similarities. So then I ask them, okay, when you're done, you're going to, you're going to switch. So A is going to interview B, then we're going to switch and B is going to interview A. And at the end, how many similarities minimum do you want to have identified? And the answer is six, because A is going to identify at least three that they have in common with B. And then when B interviews A, they want to identify at least three that they have in common with B. So at the end, they have at least six things in common. And this, you know, I don't give them any type of stipulation as to what questions, you know, they, they ask there that I leave that up to them, but I do let them know that if the partner is not comfortable answering the question, because some people go very shallow and some people go very deep 
most of the time people will ask questions like, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Do you have any brothers and sisters? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? And then some people will go a lot deeper and they'll say, you know, what is, what is something that's really important to you? And, you know, have you suffered any trauma? It just depends on the group and how well they maybe know each other or don't know each other. So I don't give them any type of criteria in terms of what they're allowed to ask and what they're not allowed to ask. I just make sure that I let them know that if they're uncomfortable in answering a question that they don't have to. So then I give them, it depends upon how long your group is, what, what time frame do you have? Are you in a classroom setting where maybe you only have 20, 30 minutes? Are you in, you know, more of a therapeutic environment where you have an hour, perhaps even longer than that? I generally give them about four minutes each, four to five minutes. And so a total of about 10 minutes. And then after they're done and make sure I forgot to mention that they have a notebook and they're writing this down because they're going to be sharing this information. So you want to encourage them, write the information down. Don't just try and save it in your head. And then at the end, they're going to stand up in front of the group. So as a pair, each pair is going to stand up in front of the group and they're going to present to the group, the information that they've learned about their partner. So they stand up and they say, this is Sally. And this is everything that I've learned about Sally. And these are the three things that I find I found that I have in common with Sally. And then you make sure that you let them know that they, they give their partner the opportunity to share their three or more things, because what can happen sometimes is the person who goes first might share all of the things that they found that they have in common without letting their partner share some of the things that they found. So reminding them of that that they need to make sure that they allow their partner to share their items and they don't have to do it in any particular order. And so each person goes and shares with the group all of the information that they found out. I make sure that I give the, the pair uh, a round of, I have everybody give them a round of applause when they are done. And I also talk about the uncomfortability of doing that like how uncomfortable it is to stand up in front of a group and to speak. And then I also, you know, joke around and I, I share with them that nobody has ever died from getting up in front of the group and that my job as a clinician is to get them comfortable being uncomfortable. Because again, I work in the addiction recovery space and that is an important part of the process is becoming more and more comfortable being uncomfortable because the more that you can do that in the treatment environment, the better off you're going to be when you leave treatment in being able to move through those uncomfortable experiences and not pick up a drink or a drug. So everyone goes. So when, you know, I let people volunteer, I'll generally ask them, okay, who is willing to go first because nobody really wants to go first. So I ask who's willing to go first. And eventually someone usually jumps up and says that they want to go first. And so you do that until everyone has shared their information. And then you sit down and you have a process period. And this is a very important part of the group. You do not want to skip this part. So this is the part where they get to share what the experience was like for them. What was it like to get up there and to share that information and also to hear all of the, the information from the other individuals. Oh, and one other thing that you may want to include as a part of their interviewing is, and I just started adding this one recently, is what's something you can ask the, the other person? What's something that most people don't know about you? And so what people generally share at the end is how interesting and wonderful and nice it, it was to be able to learn things about the people in, so I work in, in the treatment environment. So to learn things about the other people in their group in treatment that they normally would not find out. So when they're out, you know, on their own conversing with each other, they're not going to ask the questions that they asked within the group because you're in this environment where you're being encouraged. Okay. Ask any question you want to ask and find out as much information as you possibly can about this person. So then you talk about the value of finding things in common 
with each other and what you can utilize that to um, to apply to whatever population you're working with. So for me, I talk about the value of taking the time to get to know other people in their recovery program that they're going to be engaging in and how it changes our perception a lot of times once we find out we have something in common with the other person and how much more connected now they feel with that other person having learned all this information about them and also finding things that they have in common. So try that exercise and I guarantee it's going to be a favorite whoever you're working with, whether that be students or people in a therapeutic type of environment are going to really enjoy um, and even love that exercise. And if you have any questions about the exercise, leave me a comment below. Let me know. Uh, let me know how it goes once you try the, the exercise and would love to hear the, the population that you're working with and how they enjoyed the exercise. So thanks so much for joining me today, for clicking on the video. I hope you found it valuable and I'll see you again in the next video.